Hi, and welcome to a new segment or series I'm calling Cheesy Bites. I've been trying to figure out how I could increase the production pace of my videos and well, this is basically what I came up with. In these bite-sized videos, I will be covering these same kind of topics, but in a more relaxed and direct way. I will also cover products that are interesting, but might not warrant a full 15 to 20 minute video. So these should be a little shorter. Now, these won't replace the other videos, but hopefully it will be less time consuming to make so that I can make, well, more. But enough talk, let's get into what we all came here to see, which is the M65. This is a board by Mikit or Mickey, Mikit, Mikit. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. As the name suggests, it is a 65% keyboard with an additional volume knob on the right here. Visually, it's unique for sure, and I, for one, think it looks, I think it looks rather cool. It's fully mechanical and closed in an all plastic housing made of ABS. The keycaps are double shot PBT though and look really nice. And they are not the best caps out there, but for the price, I'm actually a bit surprised. Compared to what Keychron and Nufi are producing, these are superior if you ask me. The legends aren't the sharpest ones, and the modifiers can get a little muddy as we can see on the tab here. If we just pick this one out here, and if the focus actually plays along, oh yeah, it does. So you can see here the tab, is it's not super sharp, it is a little less contrasty than the rest of the cap, but overall this looks pretty, pretty good. The only weird part was the spacebar. The caps all have the cherry profile, but the spacebar has this soft edge that I actually kind of like. It's, um, you know, it's as if somebody took a bit of sandpaper and just filed it down, smoothed out the edge, if you will, you know, literally. And it makes typing or hitting the spacebar just a little bit more comfortable. It's, you know, kind of like it. It's pretty nice, actually. Now on the back we have the single USB-C port to connect to your machine as well as charging because yes, it can be operated wirelessly. It has pretty much the standard connectivity we've come to expect from pre-builds, that is three Bluetooth profiles to switch between and one 2.4 GHz dongle, which looks uh, pretty nice actually. We've got it right here, let's see if the focus does its thing. Come on, there we go. Which looks pretty nice as we can see here. It's, you know, matching color and some branding, a little X here, it's pretty cool. On the back we got some non-adjustable feet and a plastic plaque, which I first thought was metal, but it's not. The only adjustable part here is the switch, which, well, will switch between the wired and wireless mode. So the typing angle is fixed, but it's pretty comfortable out of the box. If you must, though, you can get a wrist rest. The front height is average, so most should work, like this two-tone one from Nufi. It's a bit off due to the width, but other than that, it works just fine. Moving over to the functionality, we've got the usual affair in this price range. You get your RGB if you want, but you can also buy it without any rainbow vomit, which I would recommend because it'll save you almost 20 bucks and I think without any shine through caps, it's really not worth getting it. If you do have it though, you can use function, home or end to cycle through the presets and use the up and down arrow keys to change the brightness. If you reach the limit, it'll glow red, which I'm not sure if it's being picked up on the camera, but uh, it is there. If you are like me though, you can just turn it off with function and Z. That way the RGB will be gone and won't haunt you in your nightmares anymore. As mentioned before, you can pair this with up to three Bluetooth devices and one dongle. The pairing process is pretty easy too, just like with the other boards. Just hold down the function and either Q, W or E until it starts blinking in the middle. All right, there we go. And then you just select it on your device and the pairing should be done. Incidentally, you also do this for changing the profiles between the devices. So you just hit Q, W or E once and it'll switch to the profile if you're already paired. If you want to switch to the dongle, it's just as easy. Just hit function and R and you're switched to the dongle instead of the Bluetooth profiles. Now there's no software to customize this board, but there's an unusual amount of customizations you can do just via key combinations. I'm not sure if I've seen this before, but it sort of stuck out to me as you can, for example, swatch the control and the caps lock. I recently made a video about the compact touch from Angry Meow, which is using the HHKB layout. Now that board only visually used that layout, but kept the traditional key configuration. For example, on an HHKB board, you have the left control where the caps lock usually would go. Here you can configure either. Obviously this is not an HHKB board, but the fact that you can do this is pretty cool and for someone like me who just came from such a keyboard, I immediately turned it on to not have to re-familiarize myself with a new layout. So to do that, just hold down function and caps lock for about 3 seconds until the middle blinks. And then you have the caps lock and control switched. Pretty cool. 
The same goes for switching between Mac and Windows layouts. On most other pre-builds I've tried, you do this via physical switch somewhere on the board, but here you can just hold the function and tab until it starts blinking in the middle again, and you will have the Windows and Alt or Command and Alt key swapped respectively. There's one more adjustment, but this one's a bit weird. Since this is a 65% board, you don't have the functions row, but fear not. By default, you can just hit functions in one of the numbers to access it. However, by hitting the function and right shift, you can turn the numbers row into the media keys usually found on a Mac, as well as other controls such as the volume. This will work just the same on Windows as well, but what I find weird about this approach is why not change between the function rows and media controls instead of replacing the numbers row with media controls. This way I either have numbers or media controls, but I'd rather have numbers and media controls. If you don't want this though, you can just access the media controls via the assign function and enter for play and pause or left and right for previous and next track. All right, I hope you're still with me. Now, as I briefly mentioned before, the M65 does not have any software, but that doesn't mean you can't adjust what a key does. On Windows, for example, you can use a tool called Sharp Keys, which will allow you to remap the behavior of what a certain key does. But keep in mind that this doesn't change anything on the keyboard itself, but will adjust how Windows in this example reacts to the key press binding. So if you, for example, change the function of the letter P to, I don't know, let's say print screen, every keyboard you attach to that machine will print screen when you hit P. I'm mentioning this because the volume knob can't be modified at all, but using sharp keys you could remap it to scrolling, but you would remap volume itself, which I would highly advise against because, well, changing the volume seems like something pretty essential. So it's probably better to keep the default config, which also has a push down function that'll act yet as another way to uh, control play and pause. The only part that can be customized though is physically. It has a standard knob, which means most replacements should work just fine. For example, uh, this one here from Work Louder will go in just fine and basically do the same thing. We can also change it to, let's see, this metal one from the QK75, which works just as well. It's a little bit of a tighter fit, but seems to work just fine. Looks a bit off, but you know, it works. Now this board isn't really built for customization. The most notable part here is the fact that we do not have a hot swap PCB. You can select which switches you want when you buy it, and there's quite a few options too, but after that you're essentially stuck. There's also little you can do in terms of internal modifications, which isn't bad per se, it's the usual story with pre-builds, but what is cool though is that there's already some stock acoustic treatment present. Let me show you. In order to take it apart, you have to remove these six Allen screws on the back. There aren't any tools in the box to do this because, well, again, you're probably not supposed to, but let's do it anyway. After the removal, I found the easiest way to get in was to push from the keycaps down. So you basically lift out the surrounding. You can hear the clasp loosening. Uh, it's Maybe a little bit scary at first, but actually not that bad. Now it's best if you do this upside down, because if you do it the other way around, there's going to be a lot of very, very tight cables that are going to be in the way. So flip it to the back and then after re removing all the clasps, you can just lift out the back, which should reveal the first surprise here, which is, you know, the internal foam. It is a pretty thin layer of foam, but you know, it is there. But after we remove it, we can see the three cables that are attached to the PCB, like the antenna cable here, the one that is attached to the battery, and the one that is attached to the uh, second PCB, which uh, is for the knob here. After this, we can just simply lift this piece out to reveal a, well, second surprise, if you will, gaskets thin silicon rubber gaskets, but you know, gaskets nonetheless. Now these don't do much apart from keeping acoustic reactions at bay, at least that's what I assume because the board is about as stiff as it gets. There's no flex here at all, but it's mostly because of the steel plate, which also has a layer of PCB foam sandwiched in between. If you do end up really, really, really hating the switches though, you could theoretically desolder these and wire up some new ones. I'm not going to do that because I just wanted to have a quick look inside, but I think this could be done. I can't confirm it, but the PCB looks like it's capable of receiving irregular 5-pin switches. Moving over to the stabs, these are clip-ins and factory looped to a decent amount. In fact, the spacebar sounds pretty nice actually, which you'll hear later. Alright, I think that covers the inside, so let's put this back together and get to the conclusion of this video. 
Okay, so who is this board actually for? I think anyone who's looking to get into mechanical keyboards, especially the customizing part, should stay clear of this one. There's very little you can do and the case isn't the kind that you would want to modify to the extreme. The right extension with the knob certainly looks cool in my opinion, but if you were looking for a 65% board because of desk space restrictions, keep in mind that this will push it further to the left and steal some space from your mouse. I also think it's a bit too expensive for what it is. If it was let's say 10 to 20 bucks cheaper, it would be an easy recommendation and although functionality wise you don't have as much flexibility, I think out of the box it can do what the average user needs. But I was surprised by the guts. It's more than you get on something like an iQunix board for example, which does run a little higher, but it is less than what you would get from a new file, which costs also a little bit more. The board is very solidly built. There is some flex, but considering the all plastic construction, this isn't really a surprise. I do like it. I think it's a very unique look that you won't find anywhere else. And if you're looking to set up a space or a very specific theme, this might be the missing piece. The board isn't bad. It's just, it's just not anything out of the ordinary. Alright, that's about it. What do you think of the M65? Something you would want to get? Maybe a different color? Let me know down in the comments below and also let me know what you think of this video format. Is it a no-go? Much room for improvement? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Thank you all for the support and as always, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.